Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Hans Brennings. I'm the executive director of the European Environment Agency in Copenhagen. And it's my pleasure to be with you to reflect on the topic of transformative change and how it relates to biodiversity and to a Europe that is preparing to go to the global uh, COP on biological diversity. I think this is a very timely so as Europe has framed ambitions in the European Green Deal to be world leading with its own biodiversity strategy and wants to take that ambition to the global level. But let's, let's first reflect on why we need transformative change or another term that we use in the European Environment Agency and, and that runs through our state and outlook of the environment report and through a lot of the work that we do. We talk about the need for transitional change, system change. But uh, for now, we can we can use the terms interchangeably. Why do we need this? Well, I think it is obvious that science and science that is prepared for policymakers on a global level in the IPCC, in the IPBES, but also in the resource panel is very clear. With the current trajectory that we're on, we are unsustainable in our systems of production and consumption. We are not living within the boundary conditions of the one planet that we have. And they call for urgent action, action that recognizes the linkages between the problems of biodiversity loss, the sixth great extinction, the problem of climate change and the problem of unsustainable resource use and to address them together. And they call uh, for the, that goes to the root causes. And those are, of course, linked to our systems of production and consumption. In our own state and outlook of the environment report, we echo that message and we link it very explicitly to the European policy agenda and also to the European Green Deal in its forward looking uh, character. Now, the COVID-19 crisis, of course, also illustrates why we need to think more systemically. If ever we now understand how fragile, how interconnected, how vulnerable uh, we are and how we will need to deal uh, with, with more systemic risks and, and uncertainties in the future. I'm saying this while recognizing that in the past decades, policy interventions have, of course, created improvements in environmental conditions. European policies have been driving national policies and have delivered successes, but they have not fundamentally managed to turn negative trends around. And that is mainly because they have failed to address the fundamental drivers of unsustainability. And incremental change will no longer be enough. If incremental change means that we do not meet targets, as is often the case, in uh, the European policy setting, that implementation is lagging behind, that we have a firm belief that if we put a price on things, the market will solve everything. And if not the market, at least voluntary measures will take care of things. I think by now we know enough that this will not work. What we need is to trust on the scientific understanding embedded in system science, transition science, sustainability science, uh, that we need transformative change. We need to go to the system as a whole. We need to look where it needs innovation, where we are locked into an unsustainability, how we can scale up and speed up the necessary changes that are needed, and also look into less evident parts of the system, like values, like the role of the financial system now addressed in the Sustainable Finance Initiative, social innovation, that is the type of uh, change that we need. And of course, this also relates to biodiversity. The vision of the seventh Environment Action Program, which is now ending, uh, was that we need to live within the limits of the planet. And of course, that is not the case for now. Um, we, we are further eroding, depleting, polluting, the natural capital of this little blue planet. And we use language around this that is actually rather nonsensical. That sounds good, but is nonsensical. 
like at the moment we are using 1.5 planets. Well, that is not the case because there is no 0.5 planet. It means that we are overusing the one planet that we have. It also means that we need to look at Europe's current policy performance in biodiversity. Well, in 2000, Europe said that would, we would be halting biodiversity in 2010. That didn't happen. So in 2010, we said we'll do it by 2020. That didn't happen. So it, we have to ask ourselves the tough question. Is it credible now that we will say we'll do it by 2030 now? I think that Europe wants to go with a strong legitimacy to a global biodiversity summit. And that is exactly why I think the new biodiversity strategy to 2030 matters a lot, especially if you take it alongside other strategies like the farm to fork strategy. It recognizes that we have failed on our ambitions and it recognizes that we need to go to the systems and to those drivers of unsustainability. And that means that we need to work in a coherent understanding of how biodiversity is linked to our food system, to our mobility system, to our energy system, to our financial system, to the materials that we use, to the systems of production and consumption. It also means that we have to fundamentally understand that biodiversity is not a site issue. It is the foundational capital. Natural capital is the foundational capital for uh, any society that wants to have a healthy future, which means that we need to start thinking in social ecological networks that need to be made resilient and on which we can depend for the future. And that is what the biodiversity strategy does. It doesn't stay with halting loss. It has ambitions, ambitions of delineating more areas to be protected and stronger protection. It also has an understanding that even if we protect 30% of natural uh, areas in Europe, we will not protect biodiversity just on 30% of the territory. We will have to mainstream fundamentally biodiversity in other sectors, agriculture, fisheries, renewable energy, the materials uh, system, LULUCF, those are the things that we need to look for in terms of coherency and mainstreaming. It also means looking at nature restoration, which is a tall order, but absolutely necessary. It also means that we need to reflect that innovation uh, and link it to knowledge. Knowledge about biodiversity in its systemic dimension, knowledge about biodiversity and how we can monitor this and conceptualize this. And here Europe is in the lead with the Copernicus program, but also with uh, further geospatial data and information systems, artificial intelligence. Those are technologies of the future that we need to embed in this biodiversity strategy. We will also need them to ensure better implementation of regulation because that is often lacking. And we need to understand how we can connect knowledge to this actual restoration uh, target that we have. I think it's also important to link this to a system of investments. And by now it's pretty clear that people understand in the financial work world and in the economic uh, setting what it means to be investing in a low carbon society, in the climate file. We need to make this very clear for biodiversity and ecosystems as well. And I'm very happy that the Sustainable Finance Initiative is also including biodiversity uh, and its components in the financial uh, system and how it needs to become more sustainable. What is absolutely critical is that we link ambitions to knowledge, to monitoring and to policy implementation. A good example is nature-based solutions. It is a term that is thrown around left and right now and for good reasons, but we need to understand what it is, where to use it, how to invest in it and facilitate that investment, monitor uh, how it is delivering to, to objectives 
and then make sure that these are not just implementation targets, but actually implemented across the European uh, continent. So those are, are the goals. They require systemic and transformational change. And this is exactly what I think Europe can bring to the global scene. What we can bring is the fundamental understanding of natural capital as the foundational capital. That will be the biggest fun, uh, transformative change in the minds of many, I think. We need to make a serious link with our systems of production and consumption. We need to address the food system, the energy system, materials. That is essential. Without addressing the drivers, we will not reach the goals. We need to focus not only on slowing down the loss of biodiversity, but come with a strong restoration agenda, also in very sensitive uh, biodiversity areas. We need to focus on nature-based solutions in an intelligent way, and that is driving an investment agenda. And we need to be very clear on innovation in monitoring. We will not get there by monitoring species and by monitoring micro habitats. We will need to use the technologies that we have to lift up that part. I think Europe is uniquely positioned to take the lead here. We have a, a strategy that is highly innovative now. We also have the solutions in terms of monitoring and we have made the link to the driving forces in the economy and to the financial system. If this is not the moment to address biodiversity and have a leading role for Europe, I don't know when that moment is. In fact, we do when that moment will be. It will be too late because science is very clear. This is a pivotal decade. If we don't address these issues and turn them around now, we will probably not be bothered by this agenda in the future because we will dealing with the damage and the loss and not with finding solutions that put us on a credible pathway to sustainability. Good luck in that endeavor. We are happy to be your partner uh, in this as a European Environment Agency. Do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.